Hi there, everybody. So uh, it got cold again, and I'm driving with no regen, so that's always exciting when you first start out, and <laughs> the car just keeps rolling down the hill. But um, trying to enjoy that as a as a enticement to stay inside and work on my kitchen renovation, though that has suffered a rather major setback. Despite taking delivery of my cabinets on Monday, I have uh, just finished yesterday going through the entire shipment and basically documenting problems with the cabinets, mostly with the clear coat finishes, getting lots of air bubbles and stuff like that. Now this is from a major, a major, a very major American cabinet manufacturer, uh, which I'm not going to name yet until everything's resolved, but uh, it, it, documenting it with photos and things like that has taken all week, and uh, I have about 66 pages worth of um, photographs and stuff that I've sent off to my kitchen designer uh, who works at a big box store to see what he can do with regards to getting the cabinets remade. So fingers crossed that that all resolves itself, but I can't help but thinking that this is a fairly major setback to my timeline, which then means that I'm going to be short-tempered and crunched on the other side of the project, trying to still get it all done uh, by summer or uh, at the very least, late, late spring would be ideal. So what I really wanted to talk about today was the Jaguar I-Pace, which was unveiled yesterday. And uh, I did not get a chance to watch the live stream of the unveiling or anything like that because I've been so busy with this renovation. But I've gone through some of the specs. I watched uh, chunks of it afterward on YouTube because they put the whole live stream back up on YouTube later. And, uh, and I saw the drag race with the Model X. We'll talk about that. But first of all, who would have guessed that of all the major manufacturers that Jaguar would be the first to really put up a, a, a really good, by all appearances, a really good product that's all electric? Who would have thought Jaguar? I mean, here's a company that, um, when I was growing up, had a reputation for being a little slow on the uptake. I mean, my gosh, the, the XJS and the XJ6 were basically built unchanged for decades. And... Uh, even when they did change them, they just they looked the same, just slightly newer creases in the bodywork. But here's Jaguar, all of a sudden, hey, we're going all electric, and we're going to start with this thing. Or not all electric, but they're, they're going to be putting electric versions of all their models. And we're going to start with this thing, and by the way, supposedly, it's on sale this summer. That's just staggering to me that it would be them, given the resources available to Mercedes, and uh, BMW and others to come up with a long range electric vehicle. Yeah, they all have electric vehicles, but Jaguar is the first one to come up with one that actually has a range that rivals the Tesla. That's really impressive. And if it is anywhere near what they're suggesting it will be, they are gonna sell a crap ton of them, potentially. And that's where the rub is. So let's first of all talk about the unveil. Now, the whole Model X drag race was, was kind of ridiculous. And I kind of smirked and I chuckled at it. Like, gee, I wonder who's going to win the drag race on Jaguar's promotional video. Think it might be the Jaguar? Yeah, no kidding. But let's be clear. The, the uh, I-Pace and the Model X are completely different class vehicles, uh, at least by size, if not by price. And by that, I mean a, a Model X will carry seven people and uh, is, I, I would guess, probably a 1,000, maybe 1,500 pounds heavier uh, has a lot more storage capacity, a lot more interior room. The I-Pace is more comparable to, well, for now, to the Model 3. What I think it's probably really comparable to, uh, eventually, will be the Model Y, because I suspect that the Model Y will not be much unlike the I-Pace, quite frankly. It will be somewhat taller than a regular car, but not quite big enough to be an SUV, not quite into the straight up crossover territory as far as the rear storage uh, is concerned, but we'll have a hatch and stuff like that. So I, I really think the I-Pace is really more of a foreshadowing of what we could expect with the Model Y if Tesla ever gets around to building it, which is always an unknown with Tesla because they're making trucks and internet satellites and going to Mars and all kinds of crazy stuff. So uh, that's really more of, of what you should be con comparing the I-Pace to is the Model 3. That said, they drag race uh, against the Model X, which is bigger and heavier and all of that. And lordy, lordy, they came up a winner by a car length. A car length? I wouldn't brag about that. Uh, then they cleverly had the guy say, well, if I had the P100D, excuse me, 
if I had the P100D, it would be a different race. And then they very, very sneakily put in another Model X, clearly a different color, clearly a different X, and it said on the bottom right there that it was an X100D. That's a big difference between a 100 and a P100, but they kind of let that slide and didn't really account for it. Well, when it comes to acceleration, really, it's the same drivetrain, so the um, it's just a different battery size. So if anything, a 100 is giving a little bit more power to the drive unit, but that's kind of offset by the weight, so the figures for acceleration on a 100 versus a 75 are pretty close. And the F, uh, the I-Pace, I keep saying F-Pace, don't I? The I-Pace 1, no big surprise there. And then they made a comment about, uh, so when they were talking, before they brought out the, the plain version of the 100, the, uh, or no, actually it was after the drag race, the Jaguar driver is like, oh, well, I could have bought two of these for the price of one performance version. All right, well, not really, because when I checked the prices, the I-Pace is supposed to be starting in the U.S. at about $87,000. Now, a P100D starts at X. P100D X starts at about 100 and, uh, I think it's about 120000 Does that sound right? Anyway, it's, it's not double, certainly not double. But uh, it's 130, yeah, 130,000, I think. So uh, it's, it's not double, but it will certainly wipe the floor with a uh, high pace and uh, carry a lot more people and cargo doing it. So that was kind of a disingenuous thing on their part. But uh, we expect this kind of shenanigans when they're they're talking, unveiling, and whatever. I'm just glad somebody else is making something. But the high pace actually starts at eighty-seven thousand dollars. Just for comparison, um, that's about the same price as a. Uh, Model X 75, so the initial drag race was probably fairly accurate from a price from a price standpoint, because you certainly are going to add some options to your uh, 75 um, kilowatt Model X, and uh, so yeah, 10,000 options maybe. I don't know. That might be a bit much, but I, I'd be really surprised if you if you saw people getting the base version of the i of the i pace, because Jaguar is like most European manufacturers in that they will add on extra charges for everything. Hey, you want painted emblems in your wheels? That's an extra $500. Oh, you want the windows to actually go down uh, by power on all the doors? Oh, that's an extra charge. Like, they charge you for kind of weird stuff. And they don't really do a lot of the packages like American manufacturers do, or simplified pricing, kind of like what Tesla does, where it's there's really only a few options. Anyway, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that sells. I think the price is very ambitious, especially when you consider that it's closer to the Model 3, especially with the Model Y coming out at some point, which will probably be very close spec-wise to the I-Pace. And uh, if it comes anywhere near the price of the Model 3, it's going to significantly, significantly undercut the I-Pace and have the benefit of over-the-air updates, which I don't think Jaguar can do because of their dealer agreements. Uh, and it will have the nationwide charging network, which again is always the big luring, uh, lurking question anytime another manufacturer comes out with a EV is they'll be like, oh, we can do fast charging and it'll have this range and all of that. Great. Um, where? Where are you going to charge it? And what's the range after the first 240 miles or, or so? Like, how do you continue on? The supercharger network is a, a very, very deep moat at the moment for Tesla. And even if another manufacturer throws a ton of money uh, around building stuff, by the time you go through permitting and things like that, like you're, you're looking at a fairly prolonged period to even catch up to even. But um, I, I do hope there is other networks. I do hope there is more coming that way. But I, I feel it's a little bit, eh. If you had a Model Y at, say, $60,000, which is about what the Model 3 is going for it, you know what? Add another ten grand. Well, it's still almost $20,000 cheaper than an I-Pace. And at the moment, it's just as much on sale, <laughs> even though it's supposed to be coming. It will come after the I-Pace, but I feel like $20,000 is a big premium. Now, here is where it does get interesting, though. The Jaguar, no question, far better interior. I mean, absolutely better interior. And this is what I've been saying for a long time to some of the Tesla fanboys that I know, is that you know Tesla can't rest on their laurels with these interiors because as soon as the other manufacturer comes up with uh, the drivetrain component of it, and if they can figure out the charging component of it, and for local drivers, that may not even matter, then they're going to eat Tesla for lunch because the interiors on a mass market regular car 
Like if you look at my review of the, uh, the Gangster, the Chrysler 300, it's on my blog, teslapittsburgh.com. If you look at that review, for example, you'll see that the Chrysler 300 is a pretty decent car overall. If it had an electric drivetrain, it would be better than this car because that's really the only thing that uh, this car has as an advantage is that the driving experience, the acceleration, the performance, the smoothness, all of that. Uh, of course, the fuel costs and all that, it costs a lot more than a Chrysler 300 too. In fact, it probably costs about as much as three Chrysler 300s. So if you're able to make a good car with a good interior and add that electric drivetrain, Tesla needs to be concerned. And here's Jaguar who has done it. Uh, or I should say, who has, is on the cusp of doing it because it's not available until the summer. So I think that that is something to keep an eye on, uh, especially for folks like me that, you know, I think the autopilot's kind of a nice thing. It's got its place and all that, but really adaptive cruise control is all I want. I don't have that either on this car because it's too old, but uh, the whole autonomous thing, I'm not particularly interested in. I'm more interested in adaptive cruise control because I find the um, even autopilot as it is oftentimes to be just outright annoying uh, in some of the things that it does and, and some of the things that you then have to disengage. You know, anyway, we've talked about that before. So, um, yeah, I think the, the I-Pace is interesting if you look at it from the perspective of what a Model Y could be. And a lot of talk this week about Porsche. Uh, they've been kind of loud lately about what they're going to do to, to, you know, to defeat the 20,000, uh, sorry, the 2012 version of the Tesla Model S whenever it is they actually introduce their Mission E. And, oh yeah, we're going to have chargers too. Don't you worry, we have a lot of chargers. Yeah, I, I hope so. That would be great. Um, having gone to high school and graduated high school in the city that Porsche calls home, I, I do have a soft spot in my heart for a Porsche. And I never have, own, have actually owned one. So that would actually be kind of cool if they did. I don't know if I'd own one of those or not, but it would be cool. And that's why, part of the reason why I got this car is because it kind of gave me the performance of a Panamera on the Jeep. But uh, we'll see. There's a lot of talk from a lot of manufacturers and not a lot of people actually putting something out on the playing field. So just to kind of wrap it up, I want to say kudos to Jaguar for doing something that looks really promising. And uh, I welcome the competition and I think that they need to be watching their price points and I think they need to be a little bit more aggressive about answering some of those lingering questions about how they're going to go the next leg of the journey. And I hope all the manufacturers are addressing this soon. And I, I really feel like we're on the cusp of a really interesting age. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, I will talk to you next time.